today we want to solve the discrete log problem and do it quickly. So here's the setup. A is congruent to B to the X modulo M. And we're told what A and B are, but X is a secret. Our goal is to recover X. So to dig into this, let's work through a specific numerical example. So I'll think about the prime P equals 211. And in this case, 2 happens to be a generator for the group of units. So U to 11 is generated by 2. And our specific goal then will be to find an X so that 2 to the X is congruent to 41 modulo this prime. Now I know there is such an X because 2 is a generator of the group of units. So there's some X so that 2 to the X is congruent to 41. But what is that value of X? That's our goal. So we've got this prime number, p equals 211. And in this case, the Euler phi function of p is p minus 1, which is 2 times 3 times 5 times 7. Now, p minus 1 is said to be a smooth number because none of its prime factors are particularly large. Now, there's no official definition of what particularly large means, so there's no exact definition here of what smooth means. But I'm just saying it for, for emphasis, to emphasize the fact that none of the prime factors of p minus 1 are very large. Well, and what's the problem that we're trying to solve here? The problem that I gave myself is to find an x so that 2 to the x is equal to 41 modulo 211. Now, I know there is such an x because I'm claiming that 2 is a generator of u211. So there's going to be some value of x, but I don't want to just try all the possible x's. I'd like there to be some kind of shortcut for finding an x in this case. So we'll start by uh, focusing on the prime 7. And we know that a is 2 to the x. So uh, we're going to begin this computation, this exploration, if you like, by uh, knowing that a is 2 to the x and then raising both sides to the power phi of p divided by 7. Now we'll use the division algorithm. Uh, we're going to divide x by 7. So x will be 7 times some quotient q plus a remainder r. And then we'll replace x by 7q plus r. We'll expand this out algebraically. Now look in the exponent there, we've got a 7q, and then 2 to the 7q is being raised to the power phi p divided by 7. So we can cancel those 7s. Now by Fermat's little theorem, that first term is just equal to 1, so we can remove it. Now after doing this computation, on the one hand, we've got a to the power phi p divided by 7, and on the other hand, we've got 2 raised to the power r times 2 times 3 times 5, and then this, the congruence is happening modulo 211. So what's going on here? Instead of trying to find the value of x directly, we're sneaking up on the value of x. We're figuring out what's x mod 7. So instead of trying a couple hundred possible choices for x, now all I've got to do is figure out what's r, what's the remainder after I divided x by 7. And to figure out what r is, I only have to check r equals 0, r equals 1, r equals 2, r equals 3, r equals 4, r equals 5, r equals 6. Just those seven things. So after doing this, I find that r equals 3 satisfies that congruence. And consequently, x must be 3 modulo 7. Now I repeat that same computation, but instead of 7, I'm going to use 5. And when I do that, I find out that r is 2, and consequently, x must be 2 modulo 5. I repeat it again, this time with 3, and I find out that x must be 2 modulo 3. I do it one more time, this time with the prime 2, and I find out that x must be odd. So here's what we found out. Instead of trying a couple hundred possibilities for x, we investigated the value of x modulo 7, 5, 3, and 2. And we found out that x is 3 mod 7, 2 mod 5, 2 mod 3, and 1 mod 2. And then by gluing together all of those congruences, we're able to find a value of x that works. And we discover that 2 to the 17th power is 41 modulo 211, thereby solving this specific instance of the discrete log problem. Now, having seen that specific example worked out, let's see if we can take that specific example and uh, work out a, a general procedure for attacking the discrete log problem this way. So we've got a prime p, and we can factor phi of p into a uh, product of primes raised to some powers, so the product of p sub i raised to the e sub i power. And here's the discrete log problem that we're trying to solve. We know that a is congruent to b to the x modulo p, and we're given a and b, and it's our job to find x. So we're going to do this kind of computation for each of the indices i in the uh, expansion of phi of p. So let's compute a raised to the power phi of p divided by pi ei. And uh, we'll just replace a by b to the x. I mean, a is congruent to b to the x mod p. 
Now, x is the number that we're trying to find, and we're going to try to compute what x is modulo PIEI. So I'm going to use the division algorithm to divide x by PIEI, and I'm going to get a quotient, QI, and I'll have a remainder, RI. Now I'll do a bit of algebra. Now the exponent here, I'd multiplied by PIEI, and then I divided by PIEI, so I'll cancel those. Now we'll use Fermat's little theorem to get rid of that first term. So now I've just got to find uh, that remainder, r sub i. It's uh, some integer between 0 and p sub i to the e sub i minus 1. And once I found that remainder, that tells me information about x. It reveals uh, the remainder when x is divided by p sub i to the e sub i. Now I'm repeating this for all of the indices i. And at the end, I just have to glue together all the congruences that I discover. I discover a lot of information about x. And uh, by gluing together all of these congruences, I'll reveal uh, a solution to this discrete log problem, potentially with a huge cost savings. I'm glossing over some details that are important in practice. So that last step, we have to figure out what the remainder is. You don't really want to just brute force uh, to find that, that remainder. I mean, pi to the ei could be very large still, and there are some improvements to be made. One of those improvements is the baby step giant step uh, algorithm in order to find that remainder, and that can certainly speed up uh, the process of finding those remainders. I mean, you can do better than just brute force at the expense of using a little bit more memory. But I'll leave it up to you to investigate some of those improvements. Well, as an example, let's think about this prime number. It's the product of the first 11 prime numbers plus 1. That number is prime. It's uh, 200,560,490,131. And for this prime, 79 is a generator for the group of units. So here's a discrete log problem. Let's find an x so that 79 to the x to the power is 17. And I know there is such an x because 17 happens to be a generator of the group of units. But how are we going to find such an x? I mean, if we were to actually just, let's say, try, you know, 200 billion possibilities, how long could that really take? Well, maybe we can do a million tests every second. So then doing 200 billion tests would take 200,000 seconds. But that's, uh, that's more than a couple days worth of compute time. But now we can use the preceding algorithm to massively speed up the search. This number, p minus 1, is a smooth integer, right? Its prime factors are you know, much, much smaller, certainly, than p minus 1. The sum of the prime factors is much, much smaller than p minus 1. And what are we going to do to search for that number x? Well, we're going to figure out what x is, modulo 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. So we only have to check you know, relatively few things in order to find x. Remember what our goal was. Our goal was to find an x so that 79 to the x to the power is 17 modulo p. But p is an enormous number, and I don't want to try all the possible values of x. So instead, we determine what x is modulo 2, 3, 5, 7, and so on. And then we glue together all of these congruences to eventually find a choice of x that works. We can set x equal to 74,700,680,156. And we've solved the discrete log problem. And I think it's an amazing uh, triumph, you know, because we were able to do what apparently would have taken a tremendous amount of computation. But with a little bit of cleverness, we're able to make that computation go much, much faster. Now, I don't want to oversell this. As far as anybody knows, there's no general efficient solution to the discrete log problem. But what we've seen here today is that in some cases, the discrete log problem can be attacked much more quickly than you'd naively expect, certainly way faster than just brute force. So if your security depends on uh, the hardness of the discrete log problem, you'd like to avoid the kind of attack that we've seen here today. So how could you do this? Well, you could start with a Sophie Germain prime. Uh, let's call that Q. And a Sophie Germain prime is a prime so that twice the prime plus one is also prime. So if Q is a Sophie Germain prime, that just means that 2Q plus one is also prime. So then you can use 2Q plus one as your choice of P. And we'll call that a safe prime. Because in that case, phi of p is, well, it's 2q, and q is presumably enormous. So this is one way to at least avoid this kind of attack on uh, the discrete log problem.